Welcome back to another Locked On Podcast Network crossover episode. A massive game, maybe even a playoff atmosphere in this one. In week 12, it's 49ers, Vikings, Brian Peacock, Eric Crocker, Luke Braun, Locked On 49ers, Locked On Vikings crossover coming at you right now. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another Locked On Podcast Network crossover. Brian Peacock, Eric Crocker, Luke Braun. We're talking 49ers, Vikings in Week 12. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Luke. And welcome to the Locked On 49ers YouTube channel. You're our first ever crossover guest on our newly launched YouTube channel. So, Oh, I'm so honored. I get to make this immediately bad. <laughs> no, you you're gonna make this all the more amazing, and I, I, mean, I will I cause problems on purpose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could probably screw it, uh, with us right now because there's a lot going on, and I've got like multiple <laughs> screens, and I don't know where to go. I'm already ADD when I'm just doing an audio podcast, and I'm like, okay, good, I get to put a little something on the bottom third. Uh, this is fun, but I'm excited, and actually, this is the first time you join me on a crossover with my co-host Eric Crocker over here. So I don't know if you guys have yeah. had a chance to uh, make it official, but uh, Eric, Luke, Luke, Eric. We've met, yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> hey, I'm doing good, man. I hope y'all are uh, having a good holiday. Good long weekend. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Long weekend. I hope everybody's enjoying. I don't like holidays. Too what? Expensive. Oh, come on. <laughs> don't take it there, Crocker. Don't take Too it. Too expensive. <laughs> Is that what you said? Oh, Croc was talking about what it was going to cost to drive his family and get a rental cars and go across the country because Croc's living in Arkansas now trying to get back to California. Mm -hmm. hey, I'd rent a car just to go up and down Highway 99 in California. Not a big deal for me, but like that's absurd to try to take a whole family across the country with some of these well, we rates. I'm feeling Croc on that. We are flying, and yeah, I'm not excited about that. Oh, you decided to fly? <laughs> okay, baller status. I didn't realize. Okay. There's another thing happening faster. In, in, in the fall and in the winter, the, the weather gets cooler. Running games start to prevail in the NFL, and sometimes oh, no. get sniffles start getting a little bit sick. So I think both of these factors might play into this game, Luke, when it pertains to the 49ers and Vikings. First of all, I need to get the, the, the COVID story here because yeah. a lot of unvaccinated, right, with the Vikings and maybe some cases and some folks that might not be available to play this weekend. Yeah. So the Vikings have been dealing with a COVID thing for a while. Their center, uh, Garrett Bradbury, has missed missed two games and then had another one maybe benched, maybe still kind of on the mend. If, remains to be seen. Um, they had lost Harrison Smith for a couple of games for COVID. He's back. They're, they're through a lot of like the bulk of it, but... Uh, on we're recording this on Tuesday, full transparency. On Tuesday, uh, Dalvin Tomlinson was moved to COVID nineteen IR. Um, they also had lost a couple players off their practice squad and stuff. They had Dakota Dozier went to the hospital and spent like a week in the hospital with like low blood oxygen, like really scary stuff. Um, Dalvin Tomlinson, important to note, not vaccinated, so the protocol is different for him. The best he can do is it is a an asymptomatic case that clears up really quickly, which could happen. That would be uh, he would have to like get the right negative tests like late Saturday and then he would have to like hop on a red eye flight kind of deal. But uh, it's really unlikely. We probably just don't have Dalvin Tomlinson. No Michael Pierce. He's on IR. So that that front is really, really soft right now. And there's I mean, the Vikings had the lowest vaccination rate in the league. So uh, the, the disease has been ripping through a little bit. Um, so, yeah, a thing to keep an eye on throughout the week. There might be more cases. Yeah, I mean Hasn't has been an issue for the 49ers, right? Like, have, have the 49ers had any player with COVID this year? No, I don't think so. Uh, they've had some very minor ones, but yeah, nothing major for the 49ers. I felt like they've been pretty lucky in that regard. Uh, but w one of the big factors when it comes to the Vikings is their quarterback, right? Who's unvaccinated <laughs> still, right? Is, is uh, that Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but but he, he keeps himself isolated. He's got the plexiglass okay. box. <laughs> no, so in, in real in reality, here's the deal. When in in the summer, you might have remembered Kirk Cousins going on the COVID list uh, in the middle of camp, mm -hmm. and he missed a bunch of practices. 
um, basically in response to that, the reason that he went on was uh, it was a close contact. So he had to miss five days. Um, and the close contact occurred in the quarterback room, which was too small a room for the protocols. So they basically just won't ever have Kirk in a meeting in that small room again. And they'll be like really, really vigilant about the distancing and stuff. I mean, the center got COVID positive, full on symptomatic case and Kirk wasn't a close contact. Um, so they'll, I mean, he said they'll meet outdoors if they have to. So they're going to be really, really, really cautious about protocols and stuff to make sure we don't get a close contact with Kirk. Um, but I mean, you could still catch it, right? It could still be positive, especially as we go over like the holiday weekends and stuff here. But for now, uh, as of this recording, COVID free Kirk Cousins. Well, hope, I, I want Kirk Cousins to play because Kirk Cousins and Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, a battle of yeah. efficiency there. And, and I can't got a that one. audition for Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> right exactly make sure he's still the guy yeah. um or maybe both these quarterbacks are auditioning for other teams like let's talk a little bit more about kirk cousins because sure. i i know from following you from other people who cover the vikings some vikings fans and just reading the lay of the land i think jimmy garoppolo and and and, Kyle, and uh kirk cousins have a lot of similarities for a lot of reasons one of them is depending on the week people love him or they want to send him off and shoot, shoot, fire him out of a cannon. And I feel like Kirk Cousins isn't Kirk Cousins still the highest rated quarterback for the season at PFF because Garoppolo is the highest rated PFF quarterback <laughs> the last like month or so. Um, I saw a funny he, video about that about him. Yeah, getting the he fell to number two. Did Tom he fall Brady? Oh, yeah, Tom. Brady took him over. Uh, yeah, but now he's only number two. Yeah. No. Okay. So yeah, Kirk. I, I Kirk's had a reasonable season. He had a couple of games where he really, really got under my skin. Um, you might remember the Sunday night one if you watch Vikings Dallas. He was horrible in that game. Missed a million down what downfield receivers. Um, the, the he's had some moments like that where he'll just come off of something. But they're going through this moment right now where Zimmer is like sitting Kirk down and being like, "Please just throw risky." passes throw deep just do it be aggressive if it gets tipped if it gets intercepted that's life he says he says i'm okay with that i'm not gonna kill you if you throw if you do something risky and get punished for it um which kind of runs counter to what we all thought about zimmer we all kind of thought he was the one making it be conservative and it turns out he was begging for the opposite <laughs> and, and now kirk is doing it but even you ask him about it and he's like uncomfortable <laughs> like he he doesn't like it can we have Kyle Shanahan or I don't know if Zimmer could tell Jimmy Garoppolo to take more chances downfield because Jimmy's <laughs> right. been the one to be quick to be a little safer with his passes. Yeah, and that's the hard thing is like we've always argued about that. Is this Kyle or is it Jimmy? And maybe it's, Kyle he can't really tell know, Jimmy yeah. the same thing because you never really know. So it's interesting when you actually get that perspective on that, like you got with the with the Vikings. But Jimmy Garoppolo still, yeah, not not trying to throw it downfield, not trying to throw it outside the numbers. He knows where his bread is buttered, and that's over the middle of the field. Uh, one more note there: when you're talking about some of the folks that might not be there on the field for the Vikings due to COVID, uh, that seems to game script wise be an advantage for the 49ers with a little softer interior of the defensive line oh, yeah. for the Vikings, right? Uh, yeah, we're all having some nightmares from the last time these two teams met in the playoffs yeah. where the 49ers ran eight times in a row for a touchdown drive, just totally demoralizing against, I mean, an absolutely gassed Linval Joseph, Jaleel Johnson, who is now on and off the Texans roster, a really rough uh, interior there. And now we've got, you know, a couple other guys that are uh, backups playing reasonably for backups, but they're rotational guy. They're, you know, spell the big guy for a drive type guys in James Lynch and, uh, Armin Watts are their names. But that, yeah, that it's uh, scary. I don't like it very much at all. Tom Compton revenge game. All right. I want to ask you more about this Vikings team, about this matchup with the 49ers. Then we'll turn it over to you and you can grill us about what's going on with the San Francisco 49ers. And we'll finish up this episode with making some predictions for Vikings 49ers. A big one in week 12. But I want to tell you all about Stat Hero. Nobody plays daily fantasy sports to lose of course winning feels so much better but traditional fantasy sports are a long-term losing proposition because you never know who or what you're up against stat hero is the first of its kind daily fantasy sports platform where it's you versus the house in head-to-head -head fantasy matchups winner take all and here's the crazy part stat hero shows you their lineups before you play and you handpick the team you want to face one-on-one -on -one. this has never happened before this is innovative for a fantasy sports and sports betting hybrid and stat hero uh has players clocking odds that are over four times better than your standard fantasy sports and your standard 
sports betting. Why? Because you don't have to compete against thousands of experts or unknown stat hero uh, puts you in control of your own fate instead of playing against those folks that you do not know that might be uh, maybe a little bit better at it than you are. With Stat Hero, you're in control of the stakes. You decide how much you're going to play for, and Stat Hero has no choice but to take it because they're daring you to beat them. Stat Hero, head-to-head, is what Daily Fantasy should be one-on-one, and you can get involved and sign up for free right now at StatHero.com slash locked on use promo code locked on for a 100 percent deposit match that means whatever you deposit stat hero matches it that's a 100 percent 100 percent deposit match at stathero.com slash locked on promo code locked on terms and conditions apply luke i got one more thing for you here as it pertains to these Minnesota Vikings and I want to know how good Eric Kendricks is playing and uh, I want to know if maybe some COVID might hit him at some point this week (laughs) that's the number one key to this game for me and Croc and I are not gonna have a keys to victory episode this week if I had to put one key if Jimmy Garoppolo does not throw the football to Eric Kendricks the 49ers win this football game because I think they might be able to run the ball and they might play their brand of defense and at least keep the game slow enough as long as the 49ers don't give the ball back to the Vikings. And it seems like Eric Kendricks is in Garoppolo's head. He knows where he's going to throw before he throws it. So uh, that's a big key to me for this game. Uh, How are the linebackers playing? How is that middle of the field unit playing against the the most likely place that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to target the team in the air? Um, Kendricks is insane. He's, I mean, you guys know what it's like to have a crazy good mic, right? Um, Yeah. Yeah, that's... He's. I, I think he's. He's every bit as good as you think he is. Don't look at his PFF grades. PFF ha- gives him a lot of of uh, grief for some stuff. I don't really think you should care about, like just kind of giving up space in the run versus like a guard or something like that. Which when he's on the right shoulder, but he gives up two yards or something like it's dumb. Um, he's very good at football. It turns out, uh, and he's. I mean, he's he's really good at sniffing out the play. He's gotten a couple of interceptions where he's in like a hook zone. And he just kind of backs off and like robs an over and or he's like a rat, a uh, rat in the hole, like in cover one or something. He's just like robbing an over and he'll just get an interception that way. Just may, he's just got some, like he's good for two or three eye popping. How did you do that? Plays a game um, elsewhere in the middle there. You've got Anthony Barr. He's not as fast as he used to be, but he's still a very like savvy player. Been in the league for a long time. So he knows what he's looking at. Um, very aggressive in the run fits. He's still got the strength. He can still hold up to, you know, bigger, bigger blockers and stuff like that. Um, and then the Vikings have actually been using some three safety now because they had when Harrison Smith went out for COVID rookie cam Bynum out of Cal comes in and uh, has actually played pretty well for all you Bay Area fans. Uh, he's played really well, and he's actually earned a, a spot in the rotation alongside like the nickel corner Alexander or the will linebacker um, Nick Vigil, and now you kind of have a third safety coming in. It's like a big nickel sometimes, and they've been doing that as a way to basically keep a too high shell. So you have Bynum and Woods playing deep safety, Xavier Woods um, playing deep safety, and then Harrison Smith roaming all over the line of scrimmage and essentially playing like a big kind of star, big nickel position um, and blitzing off of that and doing all sorts of crazy things from there. And like as a quarterback, you know, you're looking at Harrison Smith on the line of scrimmage. Usually you get a, a single high shell, which means that you'll be able to counter that blitz or whatever. Um, but do that plus a two high shell. That's, that's, I, I don't know. I wouldn't want to be a quarterback looking at that pre-snap. <laughs> I, I do have a question in the sense of, uh, Kirk Cousins and what he's comfortable with or not comfortable with. We have seen the downfield passes that he's completed to guys like Justin Jefferson. And you know, obviously there was a huge explosion uh, last week. If you make him have to throw underneath, how comfortable is, is he with that? Because one thing about the 49ers secondary, they actually have done an extremely good job limiting the deep plays. But underneath, hmm. you can kind of, you know, I don't want to say pick them apart, but I think that's where teams have had the most success throwing against the 49ers. Interesting. My answer to that is probably he is too comfortable uh, throwing underneath. And I, like the problem with him has been that he will see, uh, a, you know, a, a just Justin Jefferson run, streaking down the field one on one with a safety. Most quarterbacks want to take that matchup. Kirk Cousins will come off it and check down. Um, and there's a lot of touchdown or check down kind of long to short reads going on right now. Um, they, which they were reading stuff short to long, and then he would just take the short pass, and it would be a four yard gain no matter what. 
Um, and that like, so it, it's been really difficult to encourage him to throw that, that aggression. He will force a ball in there. Um, he will, he will test a tight window and he's got that rocket. He can really laser one in there on a rope. You can see some, especially in the red zone on the goal line, some of those really like quick passes over the middle, right on the goal line to a tight end. Um, but yeah, if the 49ers are going to play like off coverage and, you know, quarters and really try to get underneath throws to happen, Kirk Cousins is very, very, uh, he wants to take that bait. So if that's what the 49ers want to do, they might be able to get Kirk Cousins to do that. Um, but if then, you know, they have a tr- trouble tackling underneath or whatever, then it becomes a, uh, an elusiveness, a Dalvin Cook or, uh, or Justin Jefferson in space kind of game, or even Adam Thielen in space. Um, that has been, they, I mean, they've gotten some production out of that too, yeah. All right, Luke, I do want to turn things over to you before we take up too much of the time talking about uh, your football team, because I know you have some questions about these San Francisco Mm -hmm. 49ers before we make our predictions on this podcast. Where would you like to start? Is there anything that you've been wondering about as you've been preparing for this Week 12 game? So my biggest wonder, I guess, is, well, I have all sorts of curiosities about Trey Lance, but he's not going to play in this one, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I could can't probably spend an hour, could I probably spend you. an hour asking you about him. Cause I'm very curious hey, when we cross over in 2023, we'll be all about it. We'll talk about <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so I guess let me ask this offensively. Kyle Shanahan's is Shanny washed. What happened? It's people like <laughs> I've seen people like want to fire him. Is he bad now? Oh uh, no, that was two weeks ago, man. You're way behind. He, he found, he got his groove back. Everybody loves Shanny. Okay. They, they love right. the Shanahan offense, the, the scripted first quarter drives yeah 18 plays 20 plays taking up the entire first quarter hey look out if the Niners win the toss and in the Vikings first series they go three and out the Niners might have the ball the entire first half like that's <laughs> that's entirely possible. oh no do an 11 11 minute drive and a 13 minute drive from the last two weeks and put those together in the first half might be, that's uh, who, trouble that's who the Vikings want to be too so this is gonna we're gonna this is gonna be decided on seven possessions apiece this game yeah so what uh, makes Kyle Shanahan scary? What why what make what challenges does he pose to a defense that it, we're going to struggle with here? So Kyle, and it's weird because there's a couple things here. Like, like I, I saw Mackenzie Alexander kind of get whooped by Devontae Adams out the slot on the left side for a touchdown. Right? Uh, Kyle Shanahan doesn't one. necessarily attack a, a certain player because maybe he's not good. His thing is he understands all your rules. And in hmm. your defense's coverage, your defensive uh, coverages, and he understands how to put your players in conflict. And he does an extremely good job of doing that. So he is a master at attacking schemes. And from that standpoint, and then he has these guys that when he does attack a scheme and the timing matches up, which Jimmy Garoppolo is a really good quarterback with throwing with timing and rhythm, you, then you throw him in space to Debo Samuel or George Kittle, big plays happen. So, so, so that's what he does. He puts his guys in position to be able to make plays and pick up big chunk yardage. Now, the issue is if a team starts to kind of take away exactly what uh, Jimmy Garoppolo does well, then you can kind of throw the offense out of rhythm, and then that's when Jimmy starts to get a little, like, skittish when he has, like, too much time. It's kind of weird. It's like the more time hmm. he has, the more it's like, oh, no, what do I do? Then he might just throw a random pass. But if it's in rhythm and timing, and it's like how Kyle Shanahan sees it. That's when the defenses will be in trouble. And then he throws them off where all his run. There's somebody goes in motion every play, dang it. I'd say that's, about 95% yeah. of the time. Someone's going in motion. He's using guys. He's throwing off all their uh, all their personnel. He'll, he'll come out. There was one play on the goal line. He had Debo Samuel lined up in the backfield as a running back. He had the fullback. It was George Kittle. At tight end on one side, he had Kyle Juszczyk. And that tight end on the other side with his hand in the ground, he had Brandon Ayuk. And on the outside of Brandon Ayuk was an actual running back. So, like, he'll throw <laughs> out some, like, weird, like, formations and things that throw off your yeah. defense. Like, and guys yeah, what's like, the rule who there? Do I, who do I guard? Like, what, what guy do who I guard? Next yeah. you know, somebody's just wide open. So, I, I want to get further in the weeds with you because I feel like we could unlock something really cool. What – is his favorite thing to do against like match quarters, cover seven, save and stuff. Cause that's the Vikings live in basically all of that right now. They got Carl Scott out of Alabama as a DB coach last year. 
what does he want to do against that kind of thing when it's not necessarily like zone and it's not necessarily man, but it's man match. It's, you know, you take the outside guy, I take the inside guy kind of stuff. He'll, he'll count on Debo Samuel, George Kittle to win their matchup. Okay. Or what, what do you think? I mean, what do you think? No, he wants to run the ball. Oh, well, yeah. That's he wants to run the ball. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and on those other. two high shells. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And so they're throwing these, they're doing these tosses. I mean, and this has been something consistent and there he's basically telling you that my guys up front with Lakin Tomlinson, Trent Williams, George Kittle, and whoever we're tossing the ball to, whether it's Debo Samuel, which they've done, he ran for 90 yards last week or 80 yards last week. Uh, if it's Elijah Mitchell, he's going to tell you that we're toughening you. He's going to test that toughness of the Vikings defense. And hmm. if he starts to have some level of success, he will do that all night long to the tune of the last couple of games. The 49ers have ran the ball 86 times. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's what he wants. Kyle Shanahan wants to have 40 runs at the end of this football game. And he might he that then that means the scoreboard is probably in his favor and the time yeah. of possession is his in his favor. But I'm sure yeah. the, the Vikings want to do the same thing with Dalvin Cook, right? Sure. And I guess I, I do want to ask a little bit about the defense. Um, if the Vikings could, they would run it a lot to Dalvin Cook. Right now, they're in this moment where it's like shot play to Justin Jefferson City. We want to get him two yards, 200 yards in a game. Um, but I guess what's the identity of this 49ers defense? Is it still the kind of the way it was back in the, the Robert Sala days where, I mean, the last time we saw them or I, I, I don't know, give me, give me the overall, you know, generalities of, of the defense. I, I will say that overall similar vibe, they want to win up front and they want to get to the quarterback before anything gets exposed on the back end. They want to, they want to be tough. You know, it's very much a, a bend don't break sort of a defense um, and, and I'll let Croc talk about the, the schemes on the back end and in the defensive backfield. But for the most part, they want to win with their front forks. They know if they can, it makes life so much easier everywhere else. But they have done that less often, especially against, well, really against the run in the past. For a couple of games, they were bad against the run and they've been better recently. But the teams they've been playing against have needed to throw because they've gotten an early lead. So I'm interested to see there if this game is close or if the Vikings score first, how that game script looks and how that changes things for the 49ers defense here and the 49ers offense because they've been able to bully teams the last two weeks in the Rams and the Jaguars. But Nick Bosa is the only guy that's consistently winning in the in the pass rush game. And like mm. Arden, he's been the second best pass rusher for the 49ers for the last month of the season. Right. Which is not really a great thing, even though he's been playing good for for who Arden Key is. But he's a rotational guy, you know. And so sure. they need somebody else to step up and help out Nick Bosa, who's just getting doubled and chipped and held on every single play. And so if yeah. that starts to happen, that's what made it so easy in 2019 is you had DeForest Buckner and you had a healthy D Ford and you still had Eric Armstead. So mm -hmm. that was just too much for a team to block. And right now teams don't have to block as much on offense. But Croc, you can talk about the back end. Yeah, you know, it, it's weird because I think everybody thinks that front is the 49er strength, but I really think it's, it's been the secondary for most of this year. You know, they've been limiting big plays. The biggest issue they've had, especially early on, was just pass interference calls. They've had them mm -hmm. call on them at an alarming rate. And you, we know that's going on around the NFL, but it happened mm -hmm. more with the 49ers than anyone else. All right. But aside from that, the back end actually plays well. It's the run defense that has struggled. And they haven't been really good tackling. And then the pass rush hasn't been that good. Yeah, it's pretty much Nick Bosa, like he was saying. Nick Bosa and that's it. Now, Nick Bosa is kind of wrecking games by himself, but he's the only guy you can kind of count on to consistently get pressure. So in turn, if you just have time or if the Vikings do things like, I'm pretty sure they want to do those big bootlegs and then try to take a deep shot downfield. That less of that. Post, you said there's been less of that? Yeah, they moved away from that like a lot. They still use the bootleg, but it's more of a gimme four yards kind of play now. They will still do some play action shot plays, but they're more straight drop now. But it's still like a shot play. Like they're still going for the explosive to your point. Yeah. Yeah, but see, it's the play action that, that gets them because then you kind of have the line moving with the run action. And then, oh, it's not a run, it's a pass. And then mm -hmm. they just don't really get much pressure from there. But if you're just doing straight drop backs, I think you're actually playing more into the 49ers defensive line's mm -hmm. hands, which, again, it's not a defensive line that has consistently gotten pressure. But if you're just doing straight drop backs, I think that's you, you play more into they, they want you to do that more than the bo big bootlegs. Yeah, well, this might be an opportunity, too. I mean, the Vikings, they do not have a strong interior offensive line, and they've been doing straight dropbacks. So, yeah, if there's anybody that has any juice, now's the time. And how's this for a segue? 
because I was thinking about this this week, and we will get to the predictions coming up here and any, any other uh, notes that we have and, and key matchups in this football game for Week 12. Nick Bosa, you know what he needs before Week 12, before the Vikings play I think I do. the Niners? He I needs think I know. a built bar, right? That's right. He needs all that protein to fight through all those double teams and protect himself from all those holds. But he wants low sugar, <laughs> low calories. He wants to keep those abs, right? He wants the definition in his thighs still, but he wants to get all that protein. And you can get it with Built Bar. And guess what? We've got a brand new promo code for you for Black Friday special this weekend only. It's the most wonderful time of the year because Built Bar is going all out to make this Black Friday weekend the most delicious Black Friday that ever was in the history of black that's right new limited time flavors new types of bars and a winter wonderland of a deal you want high-end deliciousness at a discount well you've got it by built bar at built.com promo code locked 20 brand new promo code locked 20 this weekend only for 20 percent off anything and everything at built.com new flavors like ruby chocolate puffs marshmallowy goodness covered in a unique chocolate ruby chocolate uh new flavor lemon dipped cheesecake puffs and the new built bar crave bar interesting i don't even know what a crave bar is but i'm excited about it because i'm always craving built bars a built black friday weekend isn't complete without the word free buy any box of built bars through sunday and get two of their brand new candy bars built crave for free so brand new built candy bars crave bars and i am super interesting crave only has 160 calories with 17 grams of protein show me a candy bar that even comes close that's 20 percent off built bars all weekend long and two free crave bars at built.com plus you can get 60 percent off built broth and built boost and so many other things not just built bars at built.com enter promo code locked 20 at built.com all right what are we getting into next let's talk should we talk predictions are you guys ready to predict what happens on Sunday? yes 49 I, it's week 12 every vikings game has been the exact same i can tell you exactly how this one's gonna go oh every single one <laughs> Let's hear it. It's not, so, the Vikings will scream out to a lead that will disappoint you. You'll, you'll be mad. They'll be up 17-3 to three or something, and you'll be like, what's going on? This is terrible. Fire everybody. And then, two-minute drill, you get the ball, you'll score a touchdown, you bring it into 10-17, to 17, or something like, you know, 13-10, something like, back into within a score. Go into halftime feeling like you got a shot. The Vikings will melt down at some point in the second half um, amidst maybe a, a couple other scoring drives. It'll come down to the last play. And I don't know whose kicker will end up kicking, and then if they make the kick or not. That's how it goes. So whatever, take the points. <laughs> All right. Every every single game, I'm not exact. Like every game has been about middle of the second quarter. You're le- they, the Vikings have led by seven or more in every game, and they're five and five. Um, it's amazing, and it feels like the team's it's... been able to get like I, I'm seeing. So I'm watching the 49ers game, and I see the the cut in to Vikings Packers. And I see Devontae Adams getting open for a big place here. I see big plays there. And I think, oh, the Packers are probably blowing out the Vikings. And it's like, oh, no, this is a close game. And yeah. so the, the ability to overcome <laughs> even when the other team's doing good things, but then the, the ability to lose games at the same time, it's been pretty amazing and pretty maddening. Yeah. On the Peacock and Williamson podcast, we pick games every week. And I think I've gotten the Vikings game wrong every single week. Uh, yeah, I'm doing I, I have my, my pet rabbits pick the game every week and they're beating me. <laughs> they, they don't even know what they're looking at. Uh, yeah, so. To Kyle Shanahan's point, to something you talked about earlier in the show, which was uh, like that they want to kind of shorten the game, big long drives, right? Have the ball the whole first half. In the Packers game, this last game, the Packers scored on their last four possessions, which included their last true possession. They had a kneel down at the end of the half, but their last true possession of the first half. And then they got the ball three times in the whole second half. And all of them were touchdown drives. Um, and the Vikings managed to win that game because the offense kind of had the, lo- the long plotting drives of their own. The The Vikings did not get a stop, I think, after one in the second quarter. And then they did not get another stop on defense and they managed to win the game. Um, and, and I think the clock control part of that is what make you know, it's look, four touchdowns is a lot, but four touchdowns in two and a half quarters, you can kind of do that. 
Um, and if you just kind of keep the game within, like it's, that's the complimentary football thing, right? Defense is getting killed by Aaron Rodgers. Offense can at least keep the ball out of his hands and give him fewer possessions. Croc, do you want to go first on, on your prediction for this game? I mean, Luke just told us exactly what's going to go down. So I'll do that. And I say, you know, because the 49ers at home, they got a little groove going with the run game. I'll say 49ers win 27, 24. There you go. That's there's the spread too. Exactly. That's a push. You it. You the spread. Well, I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit on the fence on this one. I've got 49ers by four. So I think they're going to beat that spread by one point. Uh, they've got to keep that momentum they've had for the first or the last two weeks of this season. Those two games, they've got to play bully ball and find a way to win their brand of football and keep their foot on the accelerator and Hey, win back to back home games for the first time since, Vikings playoffs. When the- <laughs> <laughs> I will Super Bowl say, run. <laughs> this feels this game feels a lot like that, right? If you remember going into that divisional round game, a lot of people were picking the Vikings to win, and I think right now that's what's going on too. Because you, you when you kind of peek into what's going on with Minnesota, they got the high powered offense. You see Justin Jefferson. You got Chris uh, Christian Kirk. You got uh, Kirk, Cousins. Kirk Cousins. <laughs> you got Kirk Cousins, who's you know, 21 touchdowns, only two interceptions, you know, Dalvin Cook. Like, I, I can see why this game definitely can go one way or the other. And I believe it was Luke that said it early on. If this game was at a neutral site, you know, it would be a pick em, right? Yep. So, right. Per, you know, uh, per bet online, I, at least. Yeah. 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 I, I feel I feel that same way. Like, this, if this game was at a – like, if this game was in Minnesota – they probably be the ones that's favorite, especially they they come out, they do the whole school chant stuff, scares the hell out of me. So yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I take the 49ers just because like, you know, they are the home team and hopefully we'll see if the fans get behind them, but I can see it going a different direction as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it'll be interesting to see if the 49ers can be bullies if the game script goes as Luke projected and the Vikings do get yeah. out to that early lead. So that'll be fun. Here's one thing. Okay. On his career, Kirk Cousins is at exactly 500 right now. 22-22 tie. Wow. 22-22 tie. We talked about all the scenarios, too, what the percentages are to make the playoff. Let's, get, let's make it weird in the wild card race. Right? Win or if the, or if the uh, Vikings win. And actually, if it's a tie, it's better. It's worse for the 49ers and better for the Vikings if this game ends in a tie. Because Is it? The Niners, or because the Vikings currently have the tiebreaker of more. Right. Uh, okay, yeah. So we would keep the tiebreaker over. Well, for now, but then it would come down to like conference record. Hey, We're too Jimmy early Garoppolo, to talk about that stuff. They, they've started probably close to around the same amount of games in, right? Because Jimmy G, isn't he like 29 and 12 or something like that as a starter? For the uh, oh, gosh. I'd have to look that up. I yeah, mean, no, Kirk's I been mean, in league since 2012, but yeah. But Kirk, he sat for a while. Same with Jimmy. True. Jimmy was drafted two years been, later. Yeah, so close. And Kirk hasn't been hurt. So oh, he's got yeah, true. A couple extra seasons on Jimmy, probably just from injuries. Yeah. Um, how about this quick one? Over under three hundred yards from scrimmage combined between Debo Samuel and Justin Jefferson. Over. Uh, Debo's going to get some, I think. Um, the Vikings had some busts against uh, the Packers. They found some interesting ways to get one on ones with their speedy guys, um, and I feel like. Kyle Shanahan is only speedy guys like uh, he'll, he'll find it but I saw that I, I saw how the Vikings were I mean the Packers were pushing the ball down the field I saw the touchdown to uh, Valdez Gantling yeah they don't got really him on a safety like that yeah they don't use their guys like that really if if, you know, if you see him running out in the open I mean it's because he just outran everybody on he caught a slant and outran hmm. everybody which is possible <laughs> but a little less likely <sighs> than what we saw against the Packers it's it's interesting. It'll be interesting just because of the the guys the Vikings are missing. Especially, it depends on what they do at center too. Like their run game, and you know, if you want to know about what Dalvin Cook does, they like kind of stop being a zone team when without Garrett Bradbury because he's like their reach block king, and they just ran like duo and just like really straight up stuff. And sometimes they do like counter or power or something, but it was very straight up. They was like just down blocks. They weren't really asking the the linemen to do these crazy run around, you know, combos, climbing and, and crossing six gaps. Like they, in, it's just because Mason Cole, the backup center, doesn't really have that same juice. Um, but if they go with with Bradbury, there's been like an anchor issue. If you have a really powerful nose tackle and stuff, Cole has that too, but maybe it's not as bad. And so, so it'll be really interesting to see what happens there. But it's like if you're 
uh, the if you're defensively, if you're coaching the front of the 49ers, you don't really know what run game you're preparing for. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure they'll get as many looks as Kyle Shanahan can draw up in this one. Jimmy, don't throw it to Eric Kendricks, and the Niners got this one in the bag. Fair Luke, appreciate you joining us here on this Locked On 49ers, Locked On Vikings crossover. Always a pleasure chatting with you, my man. Yeah, of course, man. And... Croc and I will be back as we are every day. Thanks for making us your first listen, by the way, right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Be back post-game Monday morning, probably Sunday night, right here on the YouTube channel, breaking it all down. Locked On 49ers and Locked On Vikings.